We were talking about um, precipitation reactions and how to predict the products a little bit. Um, here are the steps involved in writing uh, balanced chemical equations for precipitation reactions. You start out by writing the formulas for both of the reactants, and um, sometimes that's given to you. Below the equation, uh, write the formulas of the products that could form from those reactants, and then refer to solubility rules to decide if any of those reactants are soluble or insoluble, really insoluble. If all of them are soluble, there's no reaction. It's just a mixing. And so then you just write no reaction or even capital N, capital R. If any of those products are insoluble, then you need to write the formulas for all the products, indicate with S and AQ which are soluble and insoluble, and then balance the equation. Okay, so those are the steps. Um, we're going to do some examples. Write an equation for the precipitation reaction that occurs, if any, when ammonium chloride and iron 3 nitrate are mixed. So we need, the, we need the formulas for the reactants. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be writing the, form, the um, actual balanced chemical equation here, and I'm going to make notes to myself underneath. If you prefer to write your notes on top and your equation underneath, that's fine. I don't know why I do it this way. I just do it this way. So here we're given names of the compounds. We have to figure out the formulas. These are ionic compounds. We need to write the formulas for the ions with their charges so that we can determine uh, the formulas for the reactants. So ammonium, what's the formula for ammonium ion? NH4, and the charge is plus one. Wow, that's, <laughs> that's pretty sketchy there. Let's try the other end of the stylus. Yeah, it is Monday. My kids are all home, and we're here. It's just not fair. Okay, chloride. Cl minus. Um, and so when we put those two together, we're looking at the charges. This is a review of nomenclature. We have plus one, minus one. We just have to put those together. We don't need to do any crisscrossing. NH4, Cl. Is ammonium chloride soluble or insoluble? It's soluble. So I'm going to put AQ as the state symbol. We know that because all ammonium compounds are soluble. The other reactant is iron 3 nitrate. So the iron 3 ion is Fe3+, plus. that's what the Roman numeral tells us. Nitrate is NO3 minus because we memorize it. These charges are not the same plus 3, minus 1, so I need 3 nitrates to balance the charge on the iron, and so the formula for this is Fe NO3 3. This is a polyatomic ion. If I have more than one of it, like I do here, I need to put parentheses around it so it isn't confusing. Is iron nitrate soluble or insoluble? It's soluble because all nitrate compounds are soluble. So there are our reactants. Now these notes that I've made underneath come in handy because do you remember the analogy of the people going to a party and they're going to meet other people and sometimes there's chemistry that happens. So what we're going to do is we're going to pair these up in a different way and see if there's any chemistry. So we're swapping partners. So we're going to put ammonium with nitrate and chloride with iron. So it always has to be a positive and a negative ion because opposite charges attract each other. You're not going to get a compound between ammonium and iron. Like charges repel each other. So I'm going to write the formulas over here um, in the bottom again. And it's always the positive ion first and then the negative. It doesn't matter if you put ammonium and nitrate first or iron and chloride first but it does matter that in each pairing, it's the cation that goes first. So Fe3+, plus, we're going to see how he gets along with chloride. And then we're going to see how ammonium hits it off with nitrate. So 
So if I pair these up, what's the formula going to be? FeCl3. Really, before we bother writing the formula, we should ask ourselves, is that compound going to be soluble or insoluble? Soluble. If you, if you remember the, the, the rules, that table of rules of solubility, chloride compounds are soluble except for <coughs> silver, mercury-2, and lead-2. This is iron. It's a chloride. It will be soluble. So that would be a Q. Then these guys, is that compound going to be soluble or insoluble? Soluble. Ammonium compounds are all soluble, no exceptions. Nitrate compounds, all soluble, no exceptions. I have two soluble compounds. Did it precipitate form? No. So I wrote that unnecessarily. All I need here is N, R, no reaction. The no reaction ones are the favorite of students because there's so much less to do. That's why it says occurs if any. Precipitation does not always occur every time you mix two solutions of ionic compounds. Any questions? Let's do another one. Write the equation when sodium hydroxide and copper 2 bromide are mixed. You're going to follow the same steps. Looking at the first name, the name of the first uh, reactant, sodium hydroxide. Okay, so that's sodium ion and hydroxide ion. If you haven't gotten the hang of writing these ions, uh, now would be a good time to work on that. They're not going to go away. When I put those together, what formula do I get? NaOH. Is that soluble or insoluble? It's soluble. So the state symbol is going to be aqueous. All sodium compounds are soluble. Plus, the other one is copper 2 bromide, bless you, Cu2 plus, that's what copper 2 means, bromide is Br minus, so when I put these two together I get CuBr2, bromine is a monatomic anion, it's just a single atom, so when I have more than one of them I don't need parentheses, I just put the subscript. CuBr2, is that soluble or insoluble? Soluble. Bromide compounds are soluble except for silver, mercury 2, and lead 2. Copper is not one of the exceptions, so this is aqueous. <coughs> now we're going to swap partners and see what happens. So we've got copper with hydroxide and sodium with bromide. Go to a party, you meet new people. Well, here's sodium with bromide and copper 2 plus with hydroxide. So we learned our lesson on the last one. What should we do before we bother putting the formulas of the products? See if any of them are insoluble. Because if they're all soluble, all we have to do is write NR. A compound between sodium and bromide, will that be soluble? Yes. yes. All sodium ion compounds are soluble. How about copper and hydroxide? Insoluble. So the hydroxide compounds are in the bottom half of that table. They are generally insoluble except for the sodium, ammonium, lithium, potassium. Those are that first row. And then there was a couple other ones. Let's actually, let's just go back and look at that real quick. Okay, so hydroxide compounds. If they're with those guys, they're soluble. But that gets taken care of when you go through this list first. If you've got calcium, strontium, or barium, it's slightly soluble. Now, if it's slightly soluble, it can still form a precipitate. 
So this hydroxide is definitely going to be insoluble. So we do have a precipitate. It's going to be this one, so that means we do have to finish this. So sodium and bromide, plus one, minus one, we push them together. We already decided that one's soluble. Here we've got plus two and minus one. We need two hydroxides. That is a polyatomic ion, so we need to put parentheses around it, put a two on the outside, and that's going to be our precipitate. Any questions? Now we need to balance this. In these equations, we can very clearly see that the polyatomic ions remain intact. The hydroxide stuck together, it just switched partners. That's all that happened. So we can ba balance that um, as a unit. Over here, we have two hydroxides, and over here, we only have one. So I need to put a coefficient of two in front of sodium hydroxide. And since we're over here, let's check the sodiums. I have two sodiums here. I only have one here, so let's put a two in front of sodium bromide. And then as long as we're here, let's check the bromine. Two bromines on this side, two bromines on that side. Check the copper, one copper, one copper. Any questions?